directed by the original director's son because he really yes wants, um, Jason is it Jason Reitman Jason Reitman yeah so he wants to take Jason the Reitman, feeling yeah. that well, there was um, before and I was like Ghostbusters yes. <laughs> Afterlife I am totally with that shit absolutely I'm it. Uh, the, I actually feel bad for um, Ghostbusters answer answer the call or as I like to call it Ghostbusters 2016 yeah um, because I do because I feel it got a lot of flack that it didn't really deserve. Um, because it was actually yo, it wasn't that bad. Um, I went in, watched it. I quite enjoyed it. Um, I would say that it didn't suffer from having an all-female cast, not at all. Um, the only thing I think it suffered from was there was too many calling backs to the original. So it wasn't enough of its own film. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't. It didn't stand on its own two legs. It didn't have its. There's, there's a difference between having a nod and uh, a salute and uh, then relying on your nostalgia. Yeah. Um, so I think it, I think it's great to have a couple of nods here and there. So Egon's statue in the yeah. in the university. Um, the fact that you got cameos from the original cast um, here and there, brilliant. I enjoyed that. But a lot of it was like, oh right, okay, so this is the this is the uh, this is their version of the library scene. This is their version of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. This yeah. is. I thought, hang on a minute. Didn't need when to are we going to start? Yeah, yeah. When do you and um, what happens with the ghosts once you've got them? Because the guys worked out you could trap them. Uh, have we not got to that bit yet? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, did they? Is it that no? They did trap them. They just didn't have any way to contain them. Is that, is it's, that right? something like that? Yeah, something like that. But no, um, it didn't stand on its own two legs in that regard for me. But apart from that, I liked it. I thought it was actually just a fun film. Yes, it was part of the Ghostbusters brand, but in in a parallel universe. That's how I view it. Because if it was a continuation, if it was an actual sequel. There would have been references to Venkman, yeah. Stance, Spengler, yeah. the original fire station. You know, hey everybody, do you remember what happened back in um, 1989? Yeah. Uh, when um, Vigo, um, the destroyer, came back and um, New York was full of ooze. It's not Vigo. And this, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let, yes, master, command me. Oh, lightning bolts in my face. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think so. I think somebody said it right. There was a fan who actually said it right on uh, YouTube um, when he commented. I assume it's a he. It could be a she. Um, but let's face it, most of the people crying by it were male. Um, <laughs> so uh, he said there already was a bad Ghostbusters movie. It was Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> and I think, to be fair, yeah. <laughs> See, I, because I, I, I'm, think I, I'm saw two the first, I think as a kid. Interesting. A bit like with me and Gremlins. I only saw Gremlins two first, then watched the first one. Um, but Ghostbusters two. I remember when that came out because I was already a fan of Ghostbusters by that point. I know I got all the action figures from the real Ghostbusters yeah. and all that, all of that. And then when Ghostbusters two came out, it was like, oh. okay, that just wasn't as good. <laughs> I would, but that was me as a kid, and I've not seen Ghostbusters two since. And to be fair, I should give it a second shot. Yeah, I, I should give it another go. I think I think overall I've probably watched them equally number of times over the years. But yeah, I'm sure as a kid I must have saw two first. Um, yeah, because I have more memories of watching two. I, I absolutely love one. I, the the comedic timing. Oh yeah, yeah. The one thing I do one like, is what reminds oh, me is that when I watched Men in Black the first one, I thought. Yeah. That this this was a '90s take on Ghostbusters. You've got a guy. I am with you who, there. Who's I am you know, totally with you there. Yeah. It's it's a guy acting completely straight. And then you've got a guy who's just coming into this. who doesn't know anything, um, and he's doing his adventure. And there's a big alien who could take over the world. And it felt like they were they were trying to make a new Ghostbuster. And they're kind of saying to fit the same genre, not necessarily a new, a new version of it. But it kind of fits that same kind of flavor. Um, and I think I have really enjoyed Men in Black just because of that. Um, when I was because that, that came out when, when I was like a late about twenty. And like with Ghostbusters one, the original, it's like I, what felt more tangible about that movie is they were all amateurs. I had no idea what they were doing, and they stumbled yeah. into this. And now shit, they're fighting a god, and they were still like 
kind of like guys who clearly they had no real idea what they were doing. We haven't tested this stuff properly, and here we got yeah. a job for it. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing when I watched the 2016 movie, they went from being people who have not had anything, and um, by three quarters of the way in the movie, they were doing rolls and dances and jumping in the air. And they're like, you're acting there like super professionals, like stunt people doing this. And I, that really took me out of the 2016 movie. As we okay, were- yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So when it becomes a little bit. Like an action movie. Say it it again, sorry. When it becomes more like an action movie, it kind of felt like it's now bubbles by the numbers, and I was like, that really took me out of it uh, a lot. Um, As of the original, even until the very last scene, they're still struggling with what they're comprehending. (laughs) I think, to be fair, that's a problem with a lot of comedies nowadays. Um, It's all about, like, say, um, bubble points, bubble numbers. It's all about that. It's like, right, you've got to have this kind of scene. Let's get, let's have the dancing scene. Let's have the jumping up scene. Let's have yeah. the, let's have the, let's, let's do the Matrix thing because no one's seen that before. Shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I think that's a problem with Hollywood, where they become too lazy. They've, yeah, they're, they're playing it so safe that almost every single comedy film is doing the same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, with Ghostbusters, for the first one. It's a masterpiece. Uh, like you say, you've got this bunch of guys who don't know what they're doing getting together and start basically becoming pest control um, for yeah. ghosts um, and then making a business because of that and end up... And you, you, you've got Ray at the top of the uh, building saying that we're from representing the uh, state and city of New York, we ask you to please conveniently conveniently move to a next parallel dimension. Love yeah. It. Fucking brilliant. It, it's, it's that. It's it's those things. It's like, what do you say to a god? Fuck it. Might as well just pull the law on her and when, when hope someone that works. works. <laughs> god, say yes. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool. Um, where, but that's the, I think that's the, one of the weaknesses of Ghostbusters 2016. There was no real... Writing like that, um, there was no moment like that, you know, um, because in Go- what what makes Ghostbusters the original is the way the uh, is the way it's just so sharp and the way it's just so ordinary at the same time. Yeah. So you had Ven- you had Bill Murray being Bill Murray basically. Um, yeah. <laughs> and and then you had an almost realism of that, um, as, as in a realism of that world. Yeah, because they're, um, they're, so they're acting exa- straight and the kind of way that we rib on each other yeah, yeah, in real life. Whereas, whereas even though Holtzman in 2016, um, oh, she's a great character. She's funny. She's, you know, um, I forget the actress's name. Kate McKinnon? Yeah. Kate McKinnon. Um, she's amazing. She's brilliant. She's a complete cartoon. Yeah. The character's just a cartoon, um, as is... Um, Melissa McCarthy, isn't it? Abby. Um, is that who she played? Yeah. Uh, Melissa, actually, I, I love the dynamic between M- 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 Melissa McCarthy and... Um, oh, Christ, I can't remember the... Because it kind of feels like... Because the, they were the team that did um, Bridesmaids, um, and it kind of felt like it was Bridesmaids cosplaying Ghostbusters. Those, those very characters in that show, just cosplaying them, and I, I, that's, that really bugged me as well. I was always surprised that Ghostbusters wasn't rebooted by the likes of like Seth Rogen and um, Seth MacFarlane. Um, I expected them guys to do their own Ghostbusters. Uh, they probably have attempted to. I reckon it would have perhaps been worse. Yeah. Uh, because they would have made it too much like the original, and they would have made it a lot more sexual. Yeah, uh, because that's the kind of humour they have. Um, um, Seth MacFarlane's great in terms of doing his impressions and uh, some of the jokes that he and well, him and his writing team for Family Guy and American Dad. Some of it's like, oh fuck, man, that's just whoa, that's harsh. That's why it's so funny. Um, but did you ever watch Seth MacFarlane's Calvacade of fun or something like that. No, I didn't. It's basically, basically, you know the little bits in between Family Guy? Yeah. 
it's basically those whole cartoon series of those little bits in between. So like uh, sex with George Takei. With, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, so it's always like the, the, probably things that were on the on the cutting room floor we just spliced together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Um, I think it, if Seth MacFarlane, Seth Rogen had uh, to come together and Jonah made their Hill. own version of Ghostbusters, it, yeah, yeah, all of that, it would have been worse because not only have you got all these all these personalities going, but I'm the funniest, I'm the funniest, I'm the funniest, yeah, but I'm the funniest with a dirty mouth, I'm the funniest with a sexist joke, I'm the, and so on and so on. Um, it would have become a parody of its own self. Um, mm. Whereas what really made Ghostbusters work is yeah. the fact that you just got your straight guys, and none of them, and this is the one thing that really bugs me about the flack that the girls got for the Ghostbusters 2016. Everyone's going, yeah, but they're all ugly, they're all fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah because Dan Aykroyd was ripped and uh, Harold Ramis was um, pulling up weights like um, Christopher Hemsworth. Well, that's, 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 you, know, you actually uh, bring up a really interesting point there. Nowadays, it's about um, you have to be a straight guy, you have to be beautiful, you have to be handsome, overly yeah. made up, chiseled body yeah. to be a superhero or be a, yeah. a main a star. When actually, yeah. what worked is they weren't that. That's it. it like, and this is what I mean by saying that, as well as the sharpness of the humour and the writing, there was this very ordinary thing about it, because these were ordinary people. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> ordinary so, people don't go around uh, somehow smuggling nuclear reactors onto your back and <laughs> shooting your shit. Uh, but give you half a chance, it would. Um, Sucky guts and guys with the Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. That must be some cockroach. Bite your head off, man. <laughs> um, you know, uh, but yeah, that's to me. That's what makes the ordinary thing. Because you look at them all, and they're not Hollywood stars. It's like that. Um, ah, what's that YouTube channel called where they make um, oh, they honest it. trailers, honest oh, yeah, trailers yeah. for yeah. Ghostbusters? And it, there's a the voiceover guy. He says, "That's right, kids. This is what actors looked like back in the 1980s." And it's, yeah, yeah. You know, they were just ordinary guys. That's the thing. Whereas on Saturday Night Live, they all did their thing independent. You know, they all did their thing independently. They worked. Um, Dan Aykroyd and uh, Al Ramos, yeah. uh, Bill Murray worked together quite often. In fact, they made Ghostbusters as a time traveling thing. That was the original joke. Um, but uh, they brought in the straight guys, Howard Ramis and. Um, it would have been Eddie Murphy, wouldn't it? But of course, it would have been Eddie Murphy. It would have been, but yeah. it wasn't. Ernie Hudson. I, I think and... he, he's a guy who I think, as unfortunately, I think he's a great actor, and he's, he's, really oh, he's honest, amazing, the down to earth guy. It, it works better because it's him, because I think it would have become the Eddie Murphy movie had he been originally yeah. in it. And so, when I was growing up as a kid, and I'm pretty sure you had the same thing, which is uh, growing up as a kid, I wanted to be uh, Peter Venkman because he was funny and because yeah. he was. Why it's cracking. But the older I've got, and I last time I watched Ghostbusters, I want to be Winston. <laughs> Winston's chill, he's laid back, he just wants to get paid. You know, um, it's just that wonderful bit where he's getting a job interview with uh, Janine, and she's saying to him, almost like she doesn't even care, Do you believe in the UFOs, the uh, Loch Ness Monster, the Bigfoot uh, lady? Uh, if you if there's, if there's a steady paycheck, I am prepared to believe whatever you say. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's true. Absolutely love it. Oh, mate, I think uh, I think Janine might have been my first crush, actually. <laughs> the cartoon Janine. Yeah, yeah, the cartoon yeah. Janine. Yeah, before I, I would... they destroyed her. Yeah. yeah I, I, no, crush is probably is, is, a, is, a, is an over term. I think I always thought she was a smarter character, and I liked the fact that she seemed sassy, quite uh, yeah. headstrong. Um, yeah. And she wasn't... Because women of that age were damsels in distress generally in movies. And even That's right. in, in comics, sorry, not just in comics, in, in cartoons, that was always the case. He had Janine, who was a receptionist, who actually sometimes put on a promo pack herself. And sometimes it took control yeah. of the team. And I liked that. You know, I, I, oh, no, she story. was full of sass. Yeah. She, was, she was sassy and snarky, and she was amazing for it. Um, like she, would, she even grabbed Slimer and then... And, and, um, to get to get her own back in the boy, she actually sent Slime on a mission to go and uh, empty the fridge. Yeah. Um, knowing knowing that they get back starving, it's like, well, oh, you know, kind of like, okay, fuck you, Slimer. The food. There you go. Be a good boy. Uh, but yeah, um, 
the cartoon version of Janine. Big 80s shock hair, the sharp glasses. Yeah. Mini skirts. Yeah, I fancied that. Yeah. Definitely. And it's interesting because they destroyed her character later on. Uh, as the series progressed and it got worse. Um, there was a guy I, I used to follow on YouTube um, who used to do all these shows about Ghostbusters. And um, he just displayed the, 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 the deterioration of the series. Um, and how Janine was written from being this sassy and snarky, strong, independent woman character, they made her, they, they watered her down. They, the, the production company that took over, they wanted it to become more motherly, and they wanted it to have round glasses, they gave her the bob haircut rather than the 80s shot because they thought sharp lines were scary for kids. Oh, man, that's terrible. Yeah. Um... And at some point, Slimer took over. It became you, Slimer and the real Ghost. That's right, it did. Yes, it did. Like in the last, uh, last couple of series. Now, actually, and, I, I bought them on DVD like quite some years ago. Yeah. Um, I, I get sticking on Ghostbusters. I guess what really impressed me is that that, that opening few, maybe the first eight episodes, where um, it was so sharply written and so well. Yeah. You'd thinking this was. This is the movie quality of writing. And then you look at the yeah. credits and you realise it's J. Michael Straczynski. He obviously wrote Babylon 5, writes Marvel. That's right. Yeah, he knew his stuff and he really was like, I want to make this the show. And then, of course, yeah. the, the movie is wrote into the show as that they yeah. are the real Ghostbusters and the movie is a movie about them. So the movie yeah. we saw in the real world is actually That's the movie right, version yeah. of the cartoon, that they're the real yeah. ones. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, they, um, because he wrote the episode um, where a newspaper reporter came around and interviewed them. What actually happened? What, um, what was the movie? <laughs> what, what was the movie really about? And you actually saw the end of the movie. Yes. They came back and they got all the, um, all the, uh, all the original overalls absolutely covered in um, Stay Puft Marshmallow stuff. And, um, you know, there's, there's the sequel, and then, isn't and then, it, where they, they and become... And say, oh, right, um, the new uniforms have arrived. Great, we can get rid of these ones. And Egon looks at the, the actual containment unit, which is the small box thing, and he goes, you know what, I've actually been thinking about this. We need to make it bigger. Um, we need to... And, of course, it explains why the cartoon one's so much bigger in the, in, than it is in the film. Yeah. And, it's, and uh, this YouTube guy, whose name I can't remember, but uh, in his head, that's official canon. That's actually how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, yeah, that's how you... Because I thought, when did, when did the cartoon start? What, 87, 88? Let's get, let's get... Ooh, um, the cartoon started about 86. Okay. So it's obviously after the film, but it's obviously retconned the other way around. And that is such smart writing for that time, because you wouldn't find that necessarily a kid's cartoon of that age, because it's generally just the goodies versus the baddies. It, yeah, and all those kind of so um, it stood out as being very different. I mean, I could, growing up, that's why the cartoon of Ghostbusters still stands up today. Certainly, those earlier, earlier episodes because the writing is so good. Uh, and there's there's the episode where it's actually a sequel to the first movie where, like uh, you said, they've got the, the marshmallow stuff on them, and then those suits yeah. then become um, copies of themselves. Yes, yes, yes because the ectoplasm um, somehow takes over and. Uh... They have to fight themselves, basically. Yes, that's, yeah. that's what happened. Yeah, that was that was so good, such a good way. So ghosts, then, dude. So I guess as we're talking about ghosts, ghosts. Oh, I like I like what you did there. <laughs> well, I was going to think, where are we going to go with this? Fucking ghosts, ghost works. So, dude, have you seen any ghost hunting shows lately? <laughs> no, that's a good thing because they're fucking awful. But I've, but I've been making one. <laughs>